In this video, we are going to walk you through your first steps with Substance 3D Painter. Painter allows you to paint on 3D models using a familiar layer-based workflow. A project begins by importing a 3D model and using the automated baking tools to create information about the model that can help in the texturing process. The 3D view showcases your model in 3D space and allows you to paint directly on the 3D model. The texture set list represents materials that were assigned to the 3D model when it was created in a 3D modeling application such as Maya or Blender. Each texture set has its own dedicated layer stack where you will work to create textures and materials for your project. The properties panel allows you to make adjustments to parameters such as changing properties on a brush. The asset panel contains various content such as materials, brushes, and textures that you can use in your project. Now that we've taken a quick tour of the UI, let's dive in and texture an object in Painter as we take a hands-on approach to learning the tool. So let's go to File, New, and for the template, I'm gonna use the first option here for PPR Metallic Roughness. For the file, I'm going to navigate to the content folder and use the Roller Skate 3D model. We'll click Open. Here I'm gonna set my document resolution to 2048, and I'm gonna make sure that these options here are disabled. So I'll click OK, and Substance Painter is now going to create the project. So you'll notice here that I have a 3D and a 2D view. In this course, we're only gonna work with the 3D view. So here, towards the top of the UI, I am going to switch the view to 3D only. Now, to navigate the 3D view, you can hold down the Alt key and use your left mouse button to orbit the view. Using the Alt key and the middle mouse button, I can pan. And using the Alt key and the right mouse button, I can zoom in and out. You can hit the F key on the keyboard to focus the view. Now, the 3D view is lit using an environment map. So I'm going to come over here to my display settings. And in the environment settings, you can see here that I have an environment map option. I'm going to turn the opacity up and the environment blur down. And here you can see this environment that is lighting my scene. If I change the environment rotation, I can change the lighting direction here in my viewport. If I want to change the lighting, I can come over to the environment map button and click this option and choose a different environment map. For this course, I'm going to stay with the default panorama. I'm also going to take the environment opacity and set this back to zero and then close the display settings. To rotate the environment with a keyboard shortcut, you can use the shift key and the right mouse button left to right to rotate the environment. Next, I'm going to come up to the edit menu and I'm going to choose to bake the mesh maps. Here in the output size, I'm going to set my resolution to 2048. Now here in the options, I'm going to disable this normal option as well as this ID option. I'm going to leave everything else at the default and then choose bake selected textures. Substance Painter is now creating a series of maps that contain information about the mesh. These maps can help in the texturing process. For example, when using smart materials to apply details based on parts of the mesh, such as the edges. Now we're going to start adding materials to the skate. Here in the Assets panel, I'm going to select the Smart Materials. And in the search, I'm going to do a search for Steel Dark. And here you can see that we have Steel Dark Aged. I'm going to left click and drag and drop this material here to the base of the skate. I let go of my mouse, the material is applied. You'll notice that the texture set list is selected, which is base. And now the smart material has been applied to the layer stack. Smart material is a material built from a group of layers. You can save a group of layers as a smart material to use in any project. And they are a great way to get started quickly. Now we're going to mask this material. So here in the group, I'm going to click this option, which allows me to create a geometry mask. Here in the properties, here in this list, I can see all of the mesh parts in the base texture set. Holding down the control key and left click and drag, I can quickly deselect all of the mesh parts. 
In the 3D view, I can click the part where I want the material to appear. I can also use the properties to select mesh parts as well. Here I'm going to choose the axles and the brackets. Once I've made my selection, I can exit the mask mode by coming over here to the material icon and left clicking. Now you can see that we have masked our material to specific locations here on the mesh. So let's continue the process and add some additional materials. I'm going to jump back to the assets and here in the search, I'm going to do a search for silver and I'm going to use this silver armor material. I'll left click, drag and drop that here to the base. You can see that a layer is created. I'm going to jump into the mask, hold down the control key, left click and drag to quickly deselect everything. And now I'm going to enable the bearings, bolts, bushing connectors, nuts, eyelets, hooks, and that will take care of all of the selections. I can exit the mask mode by clicking the material icon. And here we have applied another material. We now have two materials on the base of the skate. Now let's come over to our assets. Again, I'm filtering based on smart materials. And this time I'm going to type in plastic used. And I'm going to use this plastic used material. Left click, drag and drop here to the base of the skate. You can see it's now on top of my layer stack. I'm going to enter the mass mode once again, control, left click and drag to deselect all of the parts. And now we're going to select the wheels, the bushings, and the stopper. Now I'm going to exit the mask mode. At this point, I would like to make some changes to the layers that make up this smart material. So I will click the folder to expand the layer group. Here I can see that I have a layer. I'm going to select the layer and the layer properties are shown here in the properties panel. Clicking the material tab allows me to view the material inputs. This layer is called a fill layer. You cannot paint on a fill layer, but you can fill the contents of the layer with different information like color or roughness. In my case, I want to change the color value. Here you can see that I have a color scheme image that I created using Adobe Color. To set my color, I'm just going to sample the values here from my color theme. So I'm going to move this over to my other monitor. I will come over with the base plastic layer selected to the base color, and I will click the color swatch. Here I can choose a color, or I can use the sample tool. I'm going to left click and drag. As I drag, the sample is being chosen. And I'm going to sample the yellow value from my color theme. And with that in place, I've now added the materials to the base of the skate, and I've changed the color for the wheels, bushings, and stopper. Now, let's take a look at texturing the boot. Again, in the assets under the smart materials, I am going to do a search for leather, and I'm going to use this option called leather calf grain. I'm going to left click and drag and drop this material to the boot. Here you can see that the upper texture set was automatically selected, and the smart material is added to that layer stack. Remember, each texture set has its own dedicated layer stack. So now I'm going to make some changes. Let's expand the group. And here I'm going to take a look at this base layer and I'm going to change the base color. Going back to my color theme, I'm going to select this light blue value. So I'll move this back to my second monitor. I'm going to select here the color, use my sample tool and select that light blue value. Now this smart material also has a dirt layer and I'd like to change the color for this dirt layer as well. So I'll select the layer. I will select the base color, and this time I'm just going to grab my sample tool and I'm going to select the preview icon for my base layer. One last change I'd like to make. I'm going to come over to my base layer, and here I'm going to adjust the roughness. I'm going to move the slider towards the left, which makes the surface a bit more smooth, which gives us a brighter highlight in the reflection. Now, I would like to texture this strap here in the back. I can duplicate layers here in my layer stack. So with the layer selected, if I just right click, you'll see here we have an option for duplicate layers. So I'm going to use this option. Here I'll expand the group, and then I'm going to come over to that original base layer. And then on my color theme, I'm going to sample the bright yellow color value. Just as I did before, I need to change the color for the dirt. And now I'm going to mask the material by entering the geometry mask, control left click and drag to deselect all of the parts, and then select the strap. Now I'll exit the mask mode, and here you can see that we have applied a different color of the leather to the strap versus the actual boot.
So I have a few more materials that I need to add to the skate. I'm going to jump over to the Substance 3D Asset site and grab some materials. First, I'm going to search for rope. This climbing rope will work well. I will download the file and it will be available in the content. I'm also going to take a look at a cotton material. And lastly, I will grab a suede material. All three of these materials will be available in the content directory. So to import the files, I'm going to come over here to File and choose Import Resources, and then click the Add Resources button. In the Content folder, we are going to grab our materials, the suede material, the cotton material, and the climbing rope. With all three selected, I'll click Open, and here you can see that I need to set a tag for these materials. All three of these materials are base materials, so I'm going to select Base Material for each resource. Now I need to select an import option. In the drop down, you can see that I have my project or I have a library. The difference is that if I import to my library, these materials or resources will be available for any new project I create. If I choose project, these resources are only available in that particular project. That's the option I'm going to choose in this case and then click import. Here you can see that the asset import tag is set and here are the three materials. Because I set these materials as a base material, I can always browse to find them by using the base material tag. Here you can see the climbing rope. Let's go ahead and use this one. I'm going to left click and just drag and drop it right here onto the laces. I'm going to come over here to the fill properties and then set a scale. I'll set this to a repeat value of four. Now, as I scroll down here to the material properties, I just need to set my color values. And you probably guessed it. I'm just going to sample these values from my color theme. And that will take care of the laces. Next, let's take a look at the inside of the boot. So again, I have my material selected. I'm just going to do a search for cotton. And here is that cotton technical fabric. Left click, drag and drop here to the boot. I now need to mask this material. So I'll jump into my material mask, control left click to deselect everything, and then left click the inside of the boot. Now I'll jump outside of the mask. And with the layer selected, I'm going to set the color, once again, choosing or sampling from my theme. So here I can see that my mask for this back strap is no longer working. And I can see here that in the geometry mask, it's telling me a zero or all items are excluded. So no problem, I can just jump back into here and then select here the strap. Now I'll jump back out of the mask mode and we're good to go. Next, I will look for the suede material that I downloaded from Substance 3D Assets. And I'm going to left click and drag and drop that here to the boot. I'm going to select the properties for the fill. I'm going to set a scale once again, maybe a value of three will be pretty good. Then I'm going to enter my mass mode, control left click and drag to deselect, and then single click on this mesh part, jump out of the mask mode. And now I'm just simply going to set my material color. I'm going to set it to that bright yellow. So here in the material properties, I have a color option. I am just simply going to sample this from my color theme. So now you can see that we have applied base materials using smart materials and materials that we downloaded from Substance 3D Assets to quickly texture the entire skate. However, it looks like I forgot to add a different material here for the sole of the boot. Well, no problem. We can do that really quickly. Let's jump over to our assets and I'm going to do a search here in my smart materials and I'm going to do a search for plastic. And I think I want a more reflective material. So I'll start to type in glossy and here we have this plastic glossy scuffed. So let's left click and drag and drop this here to the boot. This is going to work pretty well. So I'm now going to jump into the mask mode. Control left click and drag to deselect all of the parts, select the sole, jump out of the mask. Now I'll jump into the layer group. Here on the plastic layer, I can just set the color. I'm going to grab my base color and I'm just going to sample the dark blue from my color theme. That will close out this first video. We covered the basic workflow of applying and masking materials as well as importing materials from Substance 3D assets. Take some time to play with different material combinations for your skate. Just make sure it has plenty of 80s awesomeness. And when you're ready, join me in the next video.